Welcome to M Squared TechCast. Hey, it's Matt Rouse. And Mike Brennan. Happy New Year. Yeah, that's right. Happy uh, New Year to everybody. Yeah, how about that? 2020. Who would have thought it, right? Yeah, yeah it sounds these, so futuristic. The years fly by, well, right? Speaking of flying, where's my flying car? I yeah. still don't have, you know, in my Jetsons apartment. Meet my George robot Jetson. made. Yeah, that's, yeah, come on now. I know. Vacations on Venus, all that good stuff. Well, you had a good point. Now, if a, if a car conks out and you're on the road, you pull off to the side of the road. But right. if a flying car conks out. You better have a parachute. Yep. Yeah, it's no good. So <laughs> comes hurtling out of the sky. Yeah. yeah, not a good thing. Probably those hackers would hack it. I'm trying to f- search for a segue to get into the Dan Lorman segue. Oh here. yeah, okay, okay yeah. yeah. We got to talk about cybersecurity. Uh, our our friend uh, Dan Lorman is here once again to uh, scare the bejesus out of us. So uh, we're going to go over the top uh, cybersecurity uh, uh, stories of 2019 and uh, also take a look ahead at 2020. Dan, welcome to the show. Great to be here, guys. Happy New Year. It's great to hear your voices. All right. So, so tell us, what, what, in your opinion, were the biggest uh, threats of 2019? Yeah, what was the big story? Yeah, I mean, I think the number one story for cybersecurity was the ransomware, um, especially how it hit uh, in new ways targeting state and local governments and hospitals. Mm. Uh, the numbers are pretty crazy, but uh, the impact... We've had ransomware for, you know, five, six years now, and going back maybe a little even longer than that. But Louisiana was hit, um, you know, New Orleans, 22 Texas towns. Uh, Florida, they had a lot of towns hit. Of course, Baltimore got a lot of headlines. In, uh, in, in Florida, you know, literally paying, uh, you know, a government, local government paying half a million dollars and then another government paying almost $600,000. Um, it really causing major impact. Um, to these cities and and uh, local government schools, school districts, and hospitals, and I think that's really the top story for 20, 2019. Why are the government entities such low hanging fruit for the bad guys? You know, I, th- I think there's a lot of speculation about that. I think they, there is um, certainly weaknesses there. Maybe they don't have the protections in place that they should. I also think, you know, along those same lines. Um, they, 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 they feel kind of desperate. They have to pay. You know, if, if, if the city's down, if, if you can't run, if you can't buy and sell things in Baltimore, you can't – literally real estate transactions were shut down. And, and uh, in some cases, um, you know, the government um, just can't function. Then, you know, there's a, there's a, a reaction where we've got to get out of the situation, and they kind of – you know, they've got you between a rock and a hard place, and they have individuals as well, but in some cases people just say, I'm just not going to pay, I'll just I'll lose the data. But if you're shutting down a government, if you're shutting down a hospital and lives are at stake, you know, a lot of times uh, that's, you know, the, the bad actors have figured that, that out, that's, that's maybe their best, best likelihood of, of getting payment. Do you think it's a, a, a fact of some government units sort of lagging in technology as well, like using older systems, older software, maybe not being completely up to date on patches and such? Absolutely, no yeah. question about it, Matt. And um, so that's that's certainly part of it. Um, I think um, very targeted. They're getting better. Uh, the the bad actors are getting much more specific and targeted and, and they're actually getting in the systems and also you know small businesses as well they are they are targets but they're getting in there they're in some cases they're getting in the systems they're they're eliminating the backups and um and they're able to you know cause the, the maximum amount of damage and therefore demand payment so absolutely and how do they uh, solve that problem? I mean, a lot of these, uh, well, tax rates are down and taxes are down and, and they don't have the right personnel at these government entities. How do they solve that problem? I mean, raise taxes? Well, I, some cases they may be doing that, but I hopefully not. I, I'll tell you, um, you know, I think states are getting involved in Texas. Um, other entities, you know, the FBI is getting involved. Other entities um uh, maybe larger governments stepping in and, and helping, um, and that's in in most cases the way it was resolved in 2019. I think we're going to see more of that. Um, but the other top stories I'll tell you guys is as we look at you know the, the year overall. Um, again, depending on who you ask, but risk based security came out with a, a survey uh, study, um, and they found 5,183. 
major data breaches last year, exposing 7.9 billion records. Oh, they're geez. saying it was, they're saying it was a record year for data breaches. So. Um, you know, we could say it was the year of data breaches. Everyone, there's always somebody that comes out every year and says this was the year of data breach. But the, I, I, I hesitate to do that because it's like every year would be the year of the data breach um, <laughs> because there's always data breaches, right? And there's people predicting more data breaches in 2020. So, um, but, you know, record, they're saying 33% more in 2019 than there was in 2018. So, you know, it, it, even though ransomware, I, I believe, was the top story, especially, you know, hitting governments, I think the wider data breach story just continues. And so uh, data breach is now, if it involves someone that's in Europe, that's going to cost some people some money now, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the privacy implications, um, the impacts, you know, and now, you know, jumping ahead here, but California and New York have new privacy laws coming into, coming into, um, uh, in, into effect. But, yeah, I mean, absolutely, the, the penalties and, and even other, you know, U.S. governments penalizing companies. Um, Facebook took a big penalty um, uh, last year of other, other, other organizations that paid privacy violations. And so, yeah, it's, it's certainly it's costing them um, money to recover from those, to, you know, identity theft protection, those kinds of things for, for the customers, but also penalties from governments. All right, so California's new cyber privacy law took effect, so now what? Well, that's a great question. Uh, you know, there's, there's going to be um, certainly a lot of people are saying that, um, you know, it's going to be tested by the courts. How will the implementation really be? Um, you know, are, a lot of companies are not ready for it. Mm. Um, they really haven't taken the steps they need to take. And so I think one of the challenges there is going to be, you know, will it be enforced? How will it be enforced? Who are they going to go after? It was like they said it was like within minutes of GDPR of the of the privacy law taking effect in Europe a few years back, they already filed the lawsuit. So they they kind of had some um, people they were looking for, some companies they were looking to make examples of right out of the gate. Um, so you know, I, I think people were kind of in a wait and see mode to see what happens in California. Um, pretty substantial. Um, penalties and also, you know, some, some really pretty strict rules around privacy and protecting privacy. So be interesting to see uh, what actually happens. I think that's, you know, going to be a, a wait and see kind of thing. Uh, our, our, a lot of companies are not ready is the bottom line there. Well, of course, then uh, the question becomes what happens in the other 49 states. We had Richard Tienan on in December, and he was saying, well, the feds are not going to allow 50 separate rules out there. And once other states begin to move on this, the feds are going to step in and, and have a, some sort of standard. That's his speculation. No, I think that's probably going to happen. I doubt if it happens in 2020 because, you know, Republicans and Democrats don't seem to be able to get together on many things <laughs> on anything. In, in Washington. <laughs> um, but, they can't you know, even name a may, post office. I mean, yeah, right. <laughs> my, guess, my guess is, is that uh, there will eventually be federal preemption laws. I think Richard is right. Um, but I, I'm not sure it's going to happen this year. I, mm. I, I, my guess is it's going to be 2021 or beyond. Um, but, you know, there's, there's plenty of other things that I think, you know, it are really highlight you know, as, we, as, we, as we think about 2020, you know, what I think there's a lot of talk about the elections. There's a lot of talk mm. about, um, uh, you know, attackers still being ahead of the good, bad guys being ahead of good, the good guys. And, you know, the attackers still, um, you know, being able to, you know, create more havoc, um, both in election security, almost ev all the major vendors are predicting um, things around elections and, and problems with elections. There are also a lot of, of, of talk about, um, you know, vulnerabilities, um, you know, in, in major platforms and major systems, um, you know, um, deep fakes is a, is a hot topic that's kind of new. You know, everyone's predicting more, more, um, more data breaches, but using deep fakes, which is like, you know, imitating people, um, you know, putting people's heads with their different bodies and, and, and maybe using that as, as ransom, as, as part of, uh, fraud and, and, and getting people to pay ransoms, um, that way, getting, you know, uh, faking different speeches, you know, you've probably seen some of those videos where they slow down a, a speech from a politician, make them appear different. 
Um, all kinds of different aspects of deep fakes is one of the top predictions. I think we're going to see a lot of action in that in that area in 2020. Yeah, they're getting good, really good at faking video, right? They've been pretty good at faking audio for a long time, a video requiring more bandwidth and more software, I guess, but they're getting much better at faking it, right? Correct, and using AI, artificial intelligence, to help them do that. Um, you know, a lot of predictions around AI and new uses of AI. Uh, the bad actors using AI, it's like a lot of the vendors are saying, you know, if, if, if the companies don't, deploy new tools, um, then, you know, they won't be able to keep up with, with, you know, kind of keep up with the Joneses, but keep up with the hackers because the hackers are going to have new tool sets um, to really be able to to cause problems. But, yes, um, you're absolutely right, Matt. Um, Getting better at video, getting better at at, um, a wide variety of of ways. Uh, Another another set of predictions around cloud and mobile, um, different – Disagreements around what will be more cloud attacks, you know, going after the big cloud vendors, or will we see more um, around mobile malware, mobile devices? But certainly, um, almost every major vendor is predicting you're going to see more around uh, uh, cloud cloud data breaches and mobile, um, you know, literally software shipping new apps ship, and they're going to have, you know, already be. Um, uh, vulnerabilities built into them. So in a recent article, um, you point out that there are a lot of predictions from major security vendors. Which ones of those do you like the best? What, which ones of those? Who, who do you think is getting it right? Yeah, I mean, it, it's a great question. I, you know, and and I, 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 look at, um, I look at, you know, literally almost every major vendor comes out with stuff right now um, at the beginning of the year. It's how they you know, become thought leaders, and that's how they get recognized. Trend Micro is really, I think, has the top report from the last three years in a row. They're always really fantastic. And they explain why, you know, why they kind of connecting the dots. They don't just pull stuff out of the air, but they, they really uh, walk through trends and show, use data, data analytics to be able to talk about that. So Trend Micro has got a great report. You guys can maybe post a link to this, but FireEye, I, I put as second. I think they, they always do a great job. Um, um, they provide video. They provide backup data. They provide a lot of information. Uh, WatchGuard Technologies is always really good. Um, and uh, I'm kind of rounding out the top five. ForcePoint uh, has a really excellent report called the 2020 ForcePoint Cybersecurity Predictions and Trends. And then McAfee um, also has an outstanding report this year. So those are the top five. But um, there's, you know, I list one to twenty some great reports that are out there. It's not just kind of random predictions, but really talking about um, the trends in the industry and why, you know, from, you know, things like uh, ransomware and DevSecOps, um, different challenges, you know, we're going to face. Um, you know, just really. Um, you know, one, one prediction I love, deep fakes as a service, uh, which is kind of funny. Um, you know, but you talk about, you know, all these different service providers, but, you know, uh, dark web, deep fakes as a service is a, is a trend, which is kind of crazy. We're going to have to leave it at that. Uh, that's uh, Dan Lorman from Security Mentor. And uh, real quick, uh, how do folks reach out to you if they want to find out more about Security Mentor? Sure, I can just uh, uh, follow me at GovCSO on Twitter. Um, certainly, you can visit uh, my LinkedIn website, uh, but securitymentor.com is um, our company, and uh, I'll be happy to connect with you on LinkedIn. Um, or my blog is Lorman on Cybersecurity and GovTech Magazine. All right. Four year students love Lawrence Technological University's thriving campus life, but LTU has always met non traditional students' needs, too. Lawrence Tech offers over 100 degree and certificate programs that can get adult students started or back on track. And most of our classes are conveniently offered evenings at our beautiful Southfield campus or online so you can balance your social, family, and work life even while you power up your career. Lawrence Tech, where blue devils dare.